I've got a nice big right. bank of professional photos that we use, which yeah. I think is like so important for Airbnb Instagram accounts, even just Airbnb listings, because having professional photography just, it just makes the place a bit more high end. You're listening to the She Renovates podcast. You're listening to She Renovates, the podcast for women who want to renovate to create an income and a life they love. Hello, hello everyone. We're back with another episode of She Renovates and today I have a dynamic mother-daughter team. Now, we really love the whole concept of mothers and daughters working together to improve their financial position because I guess for mums it's modelling what you can do when you start working with property but also the daughters bring new skills to the game as such as social media which we're not so hot on and um, so we've got Jeanette and Kelsey Sib- Sibley am I correct yeah. yeah and I met Jeanette at the huddle in Orange you know quite a few weeks ago and discovered that Jeanette and Kelsey are Airbnb fanatics is that fair to say and Jeanette has a beautiful property in Mudgee and now Kelsey is setting up her own so I thought it would be good to find out really how they've gone about that how they're going and some of the nitty-gritty so welcome to you both thank you you. okay so firstly Jeanette um, do you want to tell tell us about your property in Mudgee and what was the thinking behind you know setting it up and yeah just tell us a little bit about it. Okay so we've had our property for about 15 years and it's at the back of our laundromat business. Um, We had a it was a dingy little two-bed property that was weekly rented for about $250 a week which that was all it was really worth. A single lady lived there for, for 12 years. When COVID hit, she moved out and it was a great opportunity to do some, well, basic work to start with. But then Kelsey had come on board and said, Mum, how about we do a complete renovation? I've always wanted to do that, but hubby was a little bit reluctant. So... Um, Thank goodness, you know, whatever the daughter says, <laughs> you know, she's, she's the favourite. So, <laughs> well, that just does not seem right, does it? He um, pulled his at his heartstrings and we went from there. So we did a lot ourselves, knocked down half of it. Uh, we did, and our son is a, owns a steel frame company in Mudgee, so we got the steel frames from him. We just went hell for leather, worked worked weekends and, yeah, and it took uh, probably 12 months, do you think? Yeah. Probably yeah. about 12 months because, you know, to, to order furniture for it at the, at the end of it, that, was, that took a while. Mm-hmm. So I'd say about 12 months and here we are. Awesome. And so, um, so, so it's a two better, is it? Two bed. Yeah, and one or two bath? It's only one bathroom. Uh, we couldn't fur- we couldn't extend further out into our yard because there's a sewerage line through and council wouldn't allow us to, to go any further. So we couldn't do that. But uh, we make sure that on our listing people are aware that it's one bath. Yeah. Beautiful and heated and cooled and absolutely um, a reverse cycle in each bedroom as well uh, because the the bedrooms are the old part which is double brick which is and higher ceiling so it's quite um, it is quite cool yeah. so we we decided to bite the bullet and put in a reverse cycle in each bedroom as well as the one out in the living room. 
Beautiful. And so um, do you mind sharing roughly like what you've invested in the property and what it's returning? So dad said at the start $50,000 and I said no. I said, if you want to get good money for it, you need to spend much more. Like, so I think we we roughly worked out around one to one twenty. We're not very good with um doing like spreadsheets or yeah. budgets. budgeting. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. But that's um, right. that's, yeah, yeah. So we we um yeah. So we did spend more, but we are getting the return for, from yeah. it. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, so I know when you were not sorry. Nearly got the return within the first year. Yes, de- yeah, absolutely. We've we're uh, our return for the first twelve months was about three quarters of of what we invested. Amazing, yes. amazing. Yeah, and like Jeanette, you must be a very sharp woman woman because a what is it? Laundromat is a very cool business. So cash flow business. Yes. And now you've added the Airbnb. And uh, isn't your husband a farmer? Did I yes. hear that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're a very savvy cookie. <laughs> well, well, yeah. No, we've um we love to do that too. We love to um, you know, create things. So creating this has been so much fun and rewarding. Even like the garden, we have a beautiful little garden and we've got a fireplace where people can have a bottle of wine and, and we we also um, give a cheese platter, a, a nice little cheese platter in our fridge. We leave that there for our guests so they can pop out to the fire pit fire, uh, fireplace. It's not a fire pit, it's a beautiful fireplace and have a bottle of wine and and then we're also just across from um, a really good hotel across the road so people can go over there and have dinner if they like, walking distance to the CBD and also a lot of wineries can come and pick up, pop pop by and pick up our guests and take them on a winery tour. So a lot of feedback we get from guests is it's so central, it's such a good central spot. Well, that's really, really good feedback. So, of course, so Kelsey, you helped mum with that, with the first property? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well, I'm an interior designer, so naturally I took over a little bit. (laughs) Um, Wow. But (laughs) I think, like, you can see the kitchen behind us. We originally thought of just doing something cheap like Ikea, but we decided to invest and yeah Yeah. I end up doing an Ikea one at mine and regret it really yeah okay well um we'll deal with that in a later (laughs) session but um so tell me what so at what point in this process did you decide you were going to have an Airbnb I don't know I think like I obviously was saving up to buy my first home um boyfriend and then yeah I met my partner and he's in the Hunter Valley and so I live with him so buying my first home it was either going to be rented out or I guess an Airbnb um but yeah I had it for kind of like 12 months and then was doing bits and pieces to it um but also you wanted a little cottage didn't you a beautiful little mm, so it's it wasn't like just a, any property it's just mm, it's like this little weatherboard house um it's probably like i don't know i think 1950s it was built but it's an old house so like yeah. originally bought it thought thought maybe like a paint job new furniture and that would be it but pulled one thing apart and it was just like this domino effect and at yes. one point the house just felt like a shell. <laughs> there was no floor, there was walls, had needed a whole new roof and, yeah, basically the guy that bought the house before me did a really quick reno and you can see, like, he just put flooring down on top of a mouldy floor and, okay. like, yeah, just yeah. trying to make a quick, quick dollar and then, yeah, so... We've sort of gone through and done everything better. 
Okay, so you've done bathrooms, kitchen. Um, we didn't do the bathrooms just because they were okay. Yeah. Like they're not the nicest bathrooms, but they're okay. And yes. um, funds sort of started to get very low. <laughs> So we left the bathrooms, but everything else has pretty much been redone. And so what's the name of your listing? Um, it's Casa Wild in the Hunter. As in C-A-S-T-L-E, Wild? No, C-A-S-A. And oh. Then, yeah, Casa and then Wild with an E. Yeah. And what is that a significant name? So I was trying to like, because when mum... Mum named this place um, Hidden Nest, I think, because it's just a bit like out of, like it's out the back, it's kind of like hidden in a way. So when naming mine, I was like, I really struggled because I was like, I don't know what to call it. Anyway, I asked around a few people and it was actually my sister-in-law who suggested Casa, which means hunter, and then wild means home. So, oh, yeah, and I loved I love the name Wild, like with an E. Um, yeah. And then when she said Casa, I was like, oh, I like that. So you've you've already, you've listed the property and it's now taking bookings. Yeah, yeah. So and that that three weeks ago. Ago. Yeah, really good. So we booked out for the next three weeks, um, and yeah, it's really good. Just get bookings and haven't really had any inquiries, which is nice, um, just people booking straight away. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, so Jeanette, we were having a bit of a chat before we came on and I, I wanted to, um, I guess, flesh this out a bit more. Certainly around pricing, how do you manage your pricing? Do you use any technology or do you manage well, uh, I don't. We looked around at um, Airbnbs in our area that were similar to ours and just sort of like tested the waters, I suppose, to start with. And we thought about, you know, putting it up a little bit. We think maybe it could be up a little bit more, but then we thought, no, we're happy with with what we're getting. Uh, we're getting bookings, is which is the main thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we we haven't um, we haven't adjusted that at yeah. all. So I think we're we're at the right level. Yeah. We're at the so right point. what's your nightly rate? Like, is so we're on the um, smart pricing. Um, Ooh, so that, yeah, so we so Airbnb kind of like picks up when there's events or when people are like really looking at mudgy. Um, so it adjusts the pricing. Can, like to do with how much attraction Mudgy is getting like for that time. Yeah, but so it'll go up. So we could get anywhere from say four twenty a night. I think that's the minimum up to an extra hundred dollars a night. Like yeah, yeah. up to five hundred dollars. But initially, yeah. you thought that pricing was too high. I and did. I said no. If you want people that are going to come and respect your property, you need to have it at a rate that's going to attract those people. Um, and touch wood, you've had really I've, good guests. I've never had, we've not had any problems at all. Every guest nearly leaves it absolutely immaculate. That is awesome. Yeah. And so one of the things that I noticed in um, the... I keep saying Hunter, but Southern Highlands last week, is that the the market is quite saturated and the properties are very dependent on um, weekend bookings only. There doesn't seem to be a lot happening in the week. So what has been your experience in the Mudgee area? So we are nearly booked up every weekend, but some of those weekends are a three-night stay. So we have a minimum two-night stay, but some are a three-night stay. And then we, I would think possibly roughly around about once a month or so, we might get a um, an overlap. So we might get a, a, a week a weekday that overlaps through the week. Like, so... School we holidays. Do school holidays is generally uh, back to backs. 
uh, back-to-back bookings, which that's great. Yeah. yeah. So May. May was really busy, wasn't it? May was yeah. extremely busy. Mm. Um, January is a little bit on the quieter side because I feel like people don't really come to the bush. They go to the beach. Okay, yeah. And, and you know, sometimes after Christmas I feel like we need the a little bit of a break ourselves and because we are farmers, hay season is that's a, yeah. at its peak. So it's... Um, September is also very busy because that's like Mudgee's kind of food and wine festival time. Yes. Wedding season in Mudgee is big, a bit like the Hunter Valley. So, and, yeah, so your springtime is really, really busy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm asking what's happening in May. Don't know. What no, I don't know. <laughs> don't know. But I guess the autumn weddings as well. Yeah. yeah. Mudgee is a, a is a bit of a, a hot spot for weddings. Yeah. From yeah. away, a bit like the Hunter Valley, really. Mm. And yeah. do you have an understanding of who your market is, who the type of person that stays in your property? Mm, you can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> when it first started, I said, you want to attract, like, we attract Sydney people as such. And, yeah. you know, people that are willing to spend, $500 a night on a place. Um, yeah. yeah. I actually um, compare, we went to Sydney recently and stayed at a hotel. We paid nearly as much for a night in a hotel, which is only your, your typical standard hotel yeah. chains, mm. um, and you only get a bathroom, you get tea and coffee, and that's about it, and... And they're nice, but they're... It's nice, but um, for the price, we offer so much more. Yeah, yeah. And so in terms of management, do you both manage your own properties? You don't get any help? So... I have let my eldest daughter do the property man the management. Okay. Um, she's She's very good with... That stuff. Yeah. So I just I call myself the cleaner. The cleaner <laughs> and the prep. <laughs> I get the property ready. But yeah, no, they they love it too. My daughter, she absolutely loves to do that. So yeah. and she's got all the systems set up for uh um check-in correspondence before they come the night before. So she's got all that set up. So and that helps. Yeah. yeah. And are you only listed on Airbnb? For the moment, I would really like to actually get our website and get direct bookings because I feel like um, mm. that could be an option, but we would just wanted to start out with Airbnb. We're doing like it's doing really well on Airbnb. It's not like there's no bookings or anything. So I think Yeah. Airbnb just add their percentage on top. Yeah. So the good thing about Airbnb is the um, host guarantee. When you you haven't had anything go pear shape, but if you do, that is excellent. But the downside is something like um, the COVID. Like I noticed in COVID, it was the hosts in our community that had their independent website that did better because they had yeah. built up a database and um, were able to market directly to their database, whereas if someone goes to Airbnb, they've got thousands of listings and you, yeah, so, um, but I definitely think it's a good idea to get an independent um, platform to host right. it as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. that's in the, that's... in the thoughts that we might do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so what about you, Kelsey? Are you managing your own property in the Hunter? Yeah, I am for now. Just while it's, I mean, like I said, I've, I haven't had any inquiries, really just people booking. So yeah. it's really easy to look after right now. But um, if it, yeah. once it gets a bit busy, like Amanda, my sister, she says that sometimes she can have like 40 messages to respond to. And it's really simple stuff. Like on the listing it says, like, no pets allowed. And people will message and be like, 
hi, I know it says no pets, but can we bring a pet? And so she's got like messages that she auto responds, but lots of messages like that. So I think yeah. while I'm not having to deal with all that, I'm just looking after it myself. But yeah, if it if it gets a lot busier, I'll have to outsource that because yeah, running my own business is enough for my yeah. head. So you run your own interior design business too? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. interior design and styling. So it's very fun. Awesome. And so did you style mum's property? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so um what will say? Pardon? Mum got a little say. <laughs> What was the theme? Like, what was your guiding principle for styling the property? Did you research um, your market? And yeah. No, yeah. I think we just sort of we wanted a really neutral palette that, you know, wasn't gonna date, wasn't going to a like we didn't want something that we would have to, you know, change up the furniture in, you know, three or four years' time because it's like oh, my God, that's not in anymore or that looks so dated. So, like, we just went with a really neutral palette, um, cool. kind of like soft greens to tie yeah. in the country yep. look. Um, our our artwork too is um, we've got looking at it now, it's like beautiful kangaroos on a beautiful, uh, you know, which picks Tell up. Me, have you got a cow in the picture? Have you got a picture of a cow? No, no cows. It seems that every country Airbnb has a picture of a cow. So no, ours is, and and our our artwork in our master bedroom is beautiful gum leaves, mm, beautiful. and it just picks up the the beautiful soft tones in yeah. the bed linen. And we actually collaborated with a um, photographer for those, um, Rachel Tag. So she, we reached out to her, and she sent us some photos that she'd taken and we selected them and they suit the property Gorgeous. so well. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching uh, at the moment or in the replay, we will post the link to the listings so that you can look at them yourself. So have you, now, what's the most challenging thing that you've had in your listing, Jeanette? What's been the biggest challenge? <sighs> what would be the biggest challenge? Um I think the biggest challenge would be if we uh, have to go away and we have a back-to-back -back would okay. be that we, well, we, we've overcome the challenge because I've got a great cleaner. I've got a, okay. an amazing lady that she is just the best. So you need to have a, that's not really a challenge, that's a tip, isn't it, really, yeah. <laughs> um, to have the best a good cleaner that knows how to fluff a cushion yeah. and style a bed. And I have a little booklet which I've which my cleaner actually knows off by heart now, but just how to have everything styled, make sure that there's a list of things that are could be missing in the in the kitchen. But honestly, I, I can't think of a, a challenge that's maybe the challenge would be that we we are dog free. Like pet free, which I feel a little bit guilty a little bit about that because there's so many people love to bring their beautiful little fur balls away with them. But we just felt like that was going to be extra cleaning and there is a lot of Airbnbs properties around that do take animals. So we, we've we just decided and I feel like that's a little bit, I feel a bit guilty about that, but we wanted to stand our ground. I don't think yeah. I should feel guilty. No, um, I think we're not dog. We're not dog people too. So, like, but that's oh, probably, that's probably a challenge that we have had is that you can actually have a service dog without like, and that was one ch challenge that we did have where someone actually came here with a dog without saying anything, and we touched base with Airbnb, and there's nothing that we could do about that. Yeah. Okay, and is your is the property disability friendly? Yes, because we don't have any ramps, we don't have any steps, and actually, when we just did the reno, we didn't really put that thought. But it is 
it is so accessible for, for disability. The shower, you could wheel a wheelchair into the shower because it's an open shower. Um, there's no steps. Um, yeah. It's definitely, um, oh, there's steps going out into the, the lawn area in our in our garden, but there's no, you could, our, our outdoor living patio area is perfectly flat. Yeah. You certainly... Mine isn't. Yours isn't. No, there's steps going up into mine. Beautiful. Well, yes, I guess so it's not, well, shortly it will become mandatory when you're doing renovations, but for New South Wales it's not yet. Now, have you had any? Have you ever had any negative feedback? Uh, yes, I have, to be honest. I had a, a lady who did own a her own Airbnb and we don't have any uh, block-out curtains in our living room for the reason that we love, like I've got shears and the, the shears let in the most beautiful morning sunlight. And I did have one guest say, recommend that if there was one thing that we could do is put block-outs on our, on our living room. And we decided, no, we're not doing that because you don't sleep in the living room Yeah. to start with. Um, and we didn't think it was necessary. We love the sun coming in of a morning through those beautiful sheer curtains. So, yeah, I wouldn't lose any sleep over that one. No, no, it wasn't a big, wasn't a big deal. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal. And so do you that people want a second bathroom? Yes, uh, that... That's probably yeah, that is another yeah. another suggestion, but that's why you've said from the start, like on the listing, it's very clear that there's one bathroom. So. Yeah, but you've yeah. you've still had a few people say we have had that. I mean, yeah, that's not that's how it is. We can't do anything about that, but no, a few people, yeah. not not very many though. Yeah, and so um, I'm guessing this next question is for Kelsey. Do you do any promotion outside Airbnb, as in Instagram or anything else? Yep. So we've got um, our Instagram page um, and we're probably not as active on there as we like, but busy gal over here. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, when you say not as active, are you posting? Are you doing stories or reels? What What's your mode? Probably post every couple of weeks, but like my sister and I, like mum's always like, can we do a post? Can we do a post? But my sister and I are like, mum, you, you've got bookings. You're booked out nearly every weekend. So it's not like, you know, we don't have bookings. So we kind of try to relax her a bit like that. <laughs> but um probably post every couple of weeks. If I'm here and I pop in to see mum when she's cleaning or getting ready for a guest, I might do a quick little walkthrough with a video. But I also do interior photography. So I took all the photos here and I've got a nice big right. bank of professional photos that we use, which yeah. I think is like so important for Airbnb Instagram accounts, even just Airbnb listings because Having professional photography just, it just makes the place a bit more high end. Absolutely. I completely agree. The, and, and same with Renault's. Yeah. But uh, Jeanette, I think we're going to have to empower you to do your own Instagram posts. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that could be the next step. No. Yes. She lets me. <laughs> Let's no, because that's why Manda looks after the bookings because <laughs> mum, like, love her. But, like, when she writes, she'll leave step full stops in random places and we've got to well, help. I'll I'll little little do that. Cool for you, Jeanette. I just and push forward for, I just push them you. to do it. Good on you. And so, um, so, like, obviously you enjoy collaborating together. What would be your biggest takeaway from, like, I'm going to ask Kelsey now, from working with your mum? <laughs> um, I personally, I think I'm really harsh on her because <laughs> yeah, she's agree with that. a real client. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so she'll say something to me and in a real situation I'll say to a client, like, look, I don't think that that's, 
the best option. You know, I say it really professionally and nice, but with mum, I'm like, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> what are you That's thinking? <laughs> no way. <laughs> or she'll say something and I'll just be like, I'll just shut her down. I'm like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> but I think I'm probably really harsh on her. Would you agree? I, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Well, yes. I don't take I, it personally, though. No. I feel <laughs> She's your pain. With it. Yeah. I think there's um. I think there's there's value in giving your mum the insight into like particularly with Instagram, but I do think like I won't abdicate to my kids. Like I think we, you know, Jeanette, we've got to hold our own. We've got to, you know, because we have lots of value to bring to. You're a smart woman and, yeah, so, yes. But And tell me, what's next on your agenda? Well, we are building uh, our, our dream home at the moment, well, our forever home. That will be where we will be for the rest of our lives, um, on our property where we live. We yeah. were going to turn our shed into an Airbnb as well. There's a lot of um, council regulations that it's not compliant. Yeah. Our stairs, our top step going up to our loft isn't compliant. So I think we probably will just not do that. We'll just leave that for family. Yeah. Um, we're on a river and I dearly love to do something on the river, be it a tiny house, uh, something really, really unique. We have a, a spot pick. I have a spot picked out that I'd love to do that. So yeah, just all in the the dream phase at the moment. But yeah, yeah, it happen. Excellent. But now that we've just finished helping Kelsey with Casa Wild, that took up a lot of time for us too because we were always over there, weekends, working our little butts off. Um, so now that that's finished, it's sort of like a big relief, a little break. Yeah. But no, we would definitely love to do it again. Beautiful. And so, actually, we have some students in um, Mudgee and they tell me that Mudgee is the most expensive place pretty much anywhere for trades. Have you, uh, how have you gone getting trades? I don't think that you've got anything to compare it to, though. No, I don't know. Our, we have a lot of friends that are trades. Okay. Uh, that helps because yeah. they can push you along a little bit. Oh, you know, I'll, yes. I'll fit you in um, kind of thing. So that, that helps. But we have waited for our Tyler for over 12 months. He... He's amazing, Tyler, in um, in our area, and we absolutely wanted him to do our tiling for our, our house, and so he's just started now. Wow. Yeah. That's good pretty trade. epic. It's a good trade. You have to have good trades. Yeah. And, um, Kelsey, what's next for you? I think next for me is to just get back into a normal life after renovating. Um, oh, your plans for the, the, the lake? Oh, yeah. I think we're going to buy a house at Lake Macquarie in the next maybe two or three years. But, yeah, I think for now just getting back on track and, yeah, yeah. getting yeah, back to a you slower lifestyle. But you want something that you can renovate, don't you? Oh, well, that's what we'll be able to afford. <laughs> Because we'll probably, you know, something at a million dollars is probably, you know, a dump. <laughs> so yeah. whatever we buy, we'll need work. Absolutely. Well, that's that's the smartest strategy anyhow. Buy wholesale, Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, yeah isn't, my... it, isn't it the saying goes, buy the worst house in the best street? Absolutely. That still stands today. Yeah. yeah. And my partner's an electrician, so we get free electrical work, which helps. That's <laughs> and very then handy. Dad's a jack of all trades, so yeah, free plumber. 
free. Yeah, he does. Free. <laughs> he is very handy. Well, Jack it's all right. master of none. <laughs> Sorry? Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> no, I don't good. believe that for a minute. I've seen the quality <laughs> of your work. I think you do yeah. very well. So no, I want to thank you for coming on and um, – and we will post links to your uh, properties in the show notes. And, yeah, we hopefully we'll come to Mudgy or, and the Hunter and experience the hidden nest and Casa Wild hospitality sometime soon. So thanks for yes, being here. absolutely. We would love you all to come. Beautiful. All right. Well, that's it for now. Thanks, Mikey. Thank you. This is the She Renovates podcast. To discover how to harness the power of renovating, check out theschoolofrenovating.com.